connecting to the cloud server. That was scary. Um, hi, welcome to GUI and in web browsers. Uh, bi weekly call for 19th of May 2020. Uh, same format, maybe better video recording. We'll see that. Um, I see Jessica has the first and probably second items. Jessica, do you want to jump straight to that? Oh, oh yeah. All right. I put this in these notes like a week and a half ago, so I didn't forget and clearly they serve their purpose. Um, so yeah, so I've, I set up a metrics dashboard in Countly um, that is basically a comparison of IPFS desktop and web UI on a bunch of different things. Um, Countly does fire off every Wednesday a very abbreviated version of the latest stats. It does it in an email as like a giant image. <laughs> so, um, so what you're seeing is actually only some of the stats because um, the giant image with all the stats was just like completely unreadable. If you are not receiving this Wednesday email, I think everybody on this call should have received one last Wednesday. If you don't let me know and I will make sure that you get added to that distro list. Um, there's nothing like totally, totally surprising in there as of yet. Um, the one thing that it does point out is that upgrade pace is very different if you look at it um, of number of installs versus number of sessions. So it's really about, you know, the, the people who are frequent users have upgraded like most of them have upgraded. I didn't, I didn't check it this morning, but the upgrade rate is huge. Um, and then you've got all these people who, you know, downloaded desktop, played with it a couple of times and never ran it again. So it, it's a very different view of those metrics depending on the parameter that you look at it in. But um, take a look at the Countly. There's a lot of interesting stuff in there. Um, second one is also mine. Um, thanks, Dietrich, for helping um, proof this for me. Um, I made some tweaks to the install section of the IPFS website, um, just based on some of the things that, that I saw about like abandonment rate, um, like retention rate in, in desktop and web UI metrics. I think you, we're definitely getting in this situation, which we knew already, of people just downloading this thing for the fun of it and not really knowing what it does. And then, you know, playing with it a little bit and realizing it doesn't serve their need or it doesn't explain their need. Um, so a small tweak to that, I, I don't suspect, I don't expect to see a big change in retention metrics, but um, did change the language on the install section of IPFS.io just to make it clearer um, what does what or who might want to download what. So it'll be interesting to see if that makes any dent in anything, but it was time. Those are mine. I don't know who's doing the design meeting. I think it's me. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so this is a quick uh, PSA sort of. Uh, maybe I'll share my screen. Maybe it will work this time. Does it please work? It does. Yes. Yes. Okay, so um, I will be very brief. Um, we introduced uh, subdomain gateways in Go IPFS 0.5. And for the next release, we've been thinking about switching uh, Go IPFS to new key format, which is ED2, I think, 2.255.19. Yes. Yeah. Um, so the problem is, uh, the key is much smaller. It's so small, it can fit in the CID. So we would start inlining keys. The problem is that inlined key is two characters over the limit of a single label uh, in DNS. So that's like a hard limitation of DNS spec. And a lot of places actually implement that spec, which means you are not able to ping a domain which is which has like too long uh, segment. Um, so there will be a design meeting uh, to figure it out uh, what's the best way to handle that. Uh, we prob like we probably could find a custom representation just for this specific key. The the gist here is that we want uh, the default uh, IPNS uh, keys 
work pretty well with subdomains, but at the same time, we don't want to introduce anything. Uh, we don't want to leak any abstractions from the web browser context down to our stack, especially to the lib P2P, uh, which uh, should not worry about things like that. So I wrote a bit, a bit more here with some ideas how we can fix it and not just for that specific key type, but for the longer uh, CIDs. For example, if you use SHA-512, uh, uh, it's super long. <laughs> and it's even longer than the key and it has the same problem. So we need like a generic fix and then we may or may not uh, have a specific fix for the keys. Uh, so if you are interested in joining that call, add yourself here to the list and I will send you an invite. Um, that's it on this front. And another one is also from me. So a bunch of uh, DWAP URI schemes got approved. Uh, by Ayana. It's a part of our work on with Egalia on getting uh, protocol handlers for browser extensions to the point where they are much more useful than what we already have. In Firefox, in Chromium, we don't have anything. Uh, so we want to push uh, boundaries uh, across vendors in a like a generic way that can be used by not just IPFS, but all the projects. Uh, so the cool thing here, and I broke it. Did I broke it? We can see it. We yes. can see the way. All right. I see your whole so, browser. Perfect. So it's, it's so small, but here's the D-Web <laughs> and here's IPFS, IPNS, and I believe there's also that somewhere. It is somewhere. <laughs> uh, long story short, we got IPFS, IPNS, DWeb, uh, and while we were at this, uh, we also got uh, that, I believe secure Scuttlebutt as well. Um, and that means uh, those- is, uh, is this the first time Protocol Labs is listed on that page? Yes, and it's listed like multiple times. Yeah, I, I think, yeah, multiple times. Um, yeah, so that's cool. And it means uh, it's formal, it's formalized and you can use uh, those protocol handlers in places when it was expected to be re registered uh, by IANA and it's a part of our work. Uh, the car, if someone wants to follow up uh, the next step, uh, it's uh, whitelisting those scheme, new protocol schemes uh, in the web API called register protocol handler. Uh, it's re re redirect only API right now, but that's like the first step to get them uh, to work without web plus prefix uh, there. And then the next uh, milestone will be uh, taking that, this API and making it more powerful when uh, executed in a web, uh, web browser extension context. So for example, IPFS Companion would be able to use it to register handler uh, in Chromium. And at some point in the future, we want to have a protocol handler in which browser extension or maybe a page is able to inject arbitrary byte, uh, byte responses, uh, similar to like how service worker works or, or We'll see, uh, but that's the general direction of this work and registering URIs is the first step. Um, I think that's it for this PSA. Uh, if you have any questions, um, feel free to ask. Um, if not, we can move to almost shipped. Yeah, so basically Peerstar uh, related almost to shipped thing. So basically the Peerstar initial endeavor is completely done in terms of code in JSL P2P. Everything is done and merged in the JSL P2P 0 0.28 branch. This basically includes the address book, ebook, protobook, and also something that it was initially in the scope, which is the meta metadata book, and uh, including also data persistence for all of them. Uh, so basically now, uh, Oh, one another thing. Basically, we talked uh, earlier about uh, 
having metrics to for these improvements on storing the peers data and then restart and see how long more uh, how long less would be to be connected to all of the peers this is not done yet because basically we want to use the test ground for this and otherwise it would be just uh, uh, echi tests uh, in my laptop but uh, we are still uh, uh, waiting on the support for js in browser nodes for that so basically i'm uh, kind of postponing that until uh, uh, ugo has the support uh, so this will come in the I, I would i would recommend just do a, a quick hacky test anyway locally so you get a ballpark figure because Hugo's not going to be able to work on that for some time, I think. So you might might be waiting a while. Okay, so I will make sure we, we have it before the release. So uh, this will come in the libp 28 release, as I said. Uh, so we merged all these and also other stuff regarding this release last week as well. Jacob uh, is out this week, so we are planning on doing the release candidate uh, in the beginning of the next week. Uh, meanwhile, uh, uh, we are releasing this in the in the, in the Liberty Peace side of things. Uh, I'm also integrating it in JSAPFS. Basically, it's almost done. Uh, there is a block around the bit swap update that uh, uh, Alex is working on, and I don't don't foresee any further blockers. So, hopefully, we'll get this in the next JSAPFS release. Uh, and that's it for the peer store. Then I also added uh, another point, uh, which is the following one, and there is the rendezvous. So basically, uh, the initial plan for my quarter would be that I would work on this initial endeavor of the peer store, which is done now. And then I would work on the specs for the multi other confidence in peer scoring, which basically would be the next step in the peer store, and which we name in LipHP as a peer store v2, which also Go wants to have in their side. This would improve a lot the the, the dial performance of and connectivity in general of uh, the peers. However, uh, this would take a long time until we get to the finish line and consensus with the Go team. And uh, considering that uh, Jacob is with low availability in the browser context now, basically I talked with him and I suggested that um, uh, I should probably focus on something more with more immediate value in the browser context. And uh, so basically we got a line that I should just work on the rendezvous protocol for now. And uh, basically, uh, I, I linked the notes uh, on the issue about what is the, the LibP2P rendezvous, but for those of you who don't know, basically, the LibP2P rendezvous is a protocol that will allow general peer discovery. And with that, we can uh, it can be used for bootstrap purposes, also real-time peer discovery, and even uh, uh, application-specific routing. Uh, Basically, this would be uh, in a decentralized fashion. And uh, instead of us, have, as we currently have the WebRTC star server and the WebSocket star server, the star star server, and all those things that basically create confusion for the users and uh, basically are reinventing the wheel once and once again with uh, minor changes on all of them and infrastructure for all of them. We basically just want to uniform all of these and use the, the relay protocol and the circuit relay to achieve connectivity. And with this, I also hope to create proper documentation for browser users so that we can finally move on with all this confusion about the star servers and how this works and how we set up this and basically have a more friendly environment for browser users. And yeah, that's it. I got a super quick question in case someone wants to read about like LP2P specs. Uh, there are two specs which I just added to, oh gosh, I lost it now. Okay, so I've added two links to specs uh, on the lip 2 p specs repo. One is for rendezvous and one is for relays. Uh, so this will be based on the rendezvous one or are those like specs out of date? Uh, the spec is uh, up to date, the rendezvous one, because uh, basically Go, is also not implemented yet. There is a work in progress PR from Visu for a while ago, but uh, I think that then it shifts to something else. And basically it has been stalling for like a year or something. So I think uh, JS will be the first implementation of that spec. And if it uh, updates, it will be according to the work that we are doing. And if something needs to be changed, we will discuss with Visu and we'll update. But for now I see that that's the source of truth. 
yeah yeah makes sense especially like the browser context would be the the most prominent users of this like, yeah next one is congratulations yeah. on landing all that all the pure store and all the all the meta, all the books like p2p has a bunch of books apparently books. say congratulations <laughs> on landing the library <laughs> yeah it's done i think it's also like worth in uh reiterating in some in case someone is watching uh what this entire thing is about. I think Vashko mentioned that, but there's a link in the notes uh, about the plan to sunset star servers. So it's like super long arc from the, probably the beginning of the IPFS project uh, when we had those like temporary measures for running IPFS in web browsers and we still are using them. So this is the plan to finally do the right thing. Um, I see Rafael is back, so that's pretty good because I was running out of stuff I could say to a stall. <laughs> okay, thank you for stalling. Sorry about that. Oh, it's uh, perfect. Perfect timing. What's the current topic? Uh, shipped IPFS desktop. Ah, all right. Yeah, so we ship IPFS desktop uh, with uh, a, a plates dependency, basically. Uh, the most important was the, the Go 0.5. Dot one. Uh, that was the main source of the update. And soon enough, maybe we'll also need another update because we have an important auto updater fix that a lot of users have been experiencing. Uh, there may be other similar update issues. So I need, maybe I'll need to dig deeper into this and discuss with Lytle later, but. Um, we really should fix all the update issues in the next release so users don't get this all over again. So I'm going to do, I think my priority next will be to extensively test uh, the updating feature and try to make it working 100%. And also increase the amount of log and error uh, logging we have in the update feature. So we can trace how many users actually updated uh, how many users are still being prompt to update, in, but haven't chosen to update yet. And all that information that could be important to track this kind of problem in the future. So yeah, that's basically it for that. Was this your, the first release that you cut? Uh, no, it's the second one. Second? I already did one, uh, the 0 yes. 0.11.1 with Lidl help. Mm -hmm. And then we wrote the deployment notes and made everything simpler. And then I uh, deployed this one uh, basically alone, which is the good news, since Lidl did a good job of writing everything we needed to not bother him again with the release. <laughs> so yeah, the first, the first solo release. Yeah, basically. <laughs> And on the other note, the next topic is also mine, so I can keep it going. Uh, the file upload feedback is almost finished. Thank you, Jessica, for the feedback and all the important notes. I already answered you uh, your feedback and sent you some videos you can see. I'm going to share my screen if that's OK now. Screen two. Can you guys see my screen? Or can you guys see my screen now? Yeah. Uh, no. Oh. Black screen. Ah, oh, there it goes. Yeah. Maybe I should lower my resolution because I think it's on 4040p, so it could be a lot for them to handle. Let me just uh, switch that. NTP. There you go. Is it better now? It looks awful on my screen, but oh well. Um, it's fine. So the file upload. I cannot correctly tell you everything about it because there's a bug. I think it's the conjunction of the bugs. I really need to uh, figure out where the problem is. And thank you directly for helping with that. I think the problem is in both the Redux bundler, which doesn't directly provide feedback when the star changes. So when we have a lot of changes like this, the file progress is being changed a lot of times. Um, the Redux bundler, like bundles all the changes and just provides feedback later. 
So when we actually want to show the progress for our growing app, we cannot do it because it's having too many thought changes. And the other one is also the file upload is, uh, is consuming a lot of memory and locking the, the thread as directly showed. So we need to change that as well to make this feature 100% working. But nonetheless, I'll show you if I upload the file, it says how many files I imported. I think it's starting to show collapse because I already collapsed it before the demo. Um, and now it keeps the record here of uh, the files you uploaded and the size of it. I need to think the size between here and here because this one has decimal cases and this one doesn't. I'll show you with a uh, megabyte. Megabyte. Let's see this one. Yeah. It, to that five megabytes and this is just two megabytes so i need to think that other than that uh you can see this you can collapse and just clear it away continue to upload stuff uh since we don't have the um, the file upload already fixed if i upload a big file like this we'll just see uh hanging hanging window right here and if i show to the performance tab you can see that my memory is exponentially growing which is a problem for now but i hope uh we'll we'll fix that soon yeah that's the update for the the file upload basically anything hey. else you have on i don't Quick, quick straw poll for all you guys, because um, we had a discussion in the thread about whether it was worth the amount of work. Like if you notice manual word I can't pronounce, um, no, these all have like, um, well, that should be the generic file icon, the one without any like word lines in it, just a little sheet of paper. Um, the we discussed the amount of effort <laughs> required in trying to attach the correct file icon i at this stage am leaning toward just having the generic blank sheet of paper for everything inside of that dialogue um, for the sake of getting this in the hands of people but um since there's a large number of us in the room i thought i would see if anybody in this room objected to that yep. uh, I'm going to take that as a no. <laughs> so yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a transient dialogue. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I figure. I mean, like eventually, like if we were, if we were focused at that level of detail, it would be super cool um, if it matched the correct icon. But um, yeah, I think just the generic folder or the generic file icon. I'll make a note of that in the, uh, in the issue. Thanks, Raphael. Uh, maybe with something with an arrow up. Sorry. Arrow up. Oh, meaning that it is uploaded? Yeah. Um, or I've been uploading. Yeah, so so <laughs> there's sort of a thing because we we had talked about this. So so in the long run, we're gonna have a legit like progress bar, but we're not able, you know, for the reasons that Raphael um just went over. Um but um Often for, for many, 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 many files, the transfer speed is so fast that it would be just like such a blip. So I think, I think it's a cool idea, but I might, it, I might unless you feel super passionately about it, um, hold off um, until we do get to the point where we can have like a legit progress bar, progress bar. Yeah, the progress bar so far is- Yeah, like that. <laughs> so it's indefinite <laughs> right now, but- um, <laughs> <laughs> it's indefinite right now. Eventually, it will be real. Um, but it is at least saying things are happening. So, cool. By the way, if I may mention one thing, um, is next item my, mine or? Uh, uh, I don't know. I think we okay, skipped, maybe I'll wait. I think we skipped uh, the. We keep skipping threads. the companion one. This will take two seconds. I promise. <laughs> you all hate companion. Why do you hate companion? Um, <laughs> and, and Lionel, I um, I I didn't add the things that that you the changes that you made in the upcoming companion release, but you 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 cut a beta and you're real close to cutting a stable, right? Yeah, I think uh, the, what I did, uh, there, there are like huge uh, size reduction, like yeah. for Firefox, it's, it was 10 and now it's two megabytes, which is ridiculous. Um, basically, I checked which types of fonts are supported by Firefox and Chromium and I removed everything that's not 
like I think just like a, the best type. Um, uh, I will sh like I already merged uh, this work on companion preferences that you did, and I will cut uh, a beta today and probably a stable later this week Sweet. with those changes. Sweet. Yeah. So the preference is now open in their own tab, so they don't look differently ugly depending on what browser you use. Um, <laughs> and um, as of early this morning, they are now responsive. Um, I depending on depending on what the final cutover date for uh, the docs beta going non beta is. Um, I might be able to get improvements to the welcome screen in there. There doesn't seem to be much point in doing that if the URLs are all going to change like two days after we do it, though. So um, I'll at least I'll at least get a PR in there so that we can we can talk over what goes in the welcome screen. But we may not want to merge that if uh, Docs Beta hasn't officially launched by the time you cut your release. Might be a good. Oh, that's okay. All right, Rackley, it's all you. Um, I muted. Oh, I'm not muted, sorry. Um, yes, uh, so I did look into the large file upload memory uh, gross issue, partially because that is something related to the work I'm also going to be facing uh, with the moving stuff across the workers. Um, good news is my platform is actually is able to handle that and do the streaming. Bad news is currently JS IPFS doing through all the normalizations that happens in the pipeline and kind of loses some of the properties. Uh, and that's why it ends up the way it is. Um, but it's solvable, so we can do it. Um, one thing through this experiment I noticed that I think might be worth uh, emphasizing, although I'm not sure how common that would be, is that as I was uploading huge files, I noticed that whole size versus whole library, like I think in the web UI, we show two sizes. One is for the total size and one of the specific thing you're looking at. And I end up with specific thing being smaller than the full size, um, which I don't think it's a bug. It is uh, the things that make sense because of this duplication. But I felt like maybe this is something we can more emphasize better in the UI and explain uh, why that might be a case since it's a uh, positive. Um, I wrote a proposal for uh, no sharing across browser context that I talked about last week, I think, or two weeks ago, I guess. Uh, it's in the notes. If you can provide feedback, you should, because it would be very helpful. Uh, I posted that to the discussion group to ask feedback from community. Um, uh, it will be in the newsletter, and I'll be talking to Sribox and Textile either this week or next week to get a direct feedback from them, as I know they're the biggest or uh, users that use it in the browsers. Um, uh, what is this? Yeah, so I one thing that I think uh, I also end up uh, looking into is if we will be sharing IPFS nodes across browsers, uh, browsing context, we will have to be sharing uh, configuration. Uh, so that means two things would have to agree on the configuration. I think this is a problem actually that is beyond the browser. Well, once browsers start shipping in natively, then and users of IPFS won't be able to say what the configuration they want to use. It will be browser shipping with a specific configuration. There is also the issues that came up before with textile, desktop, and radical, and web UI, sorry, not web UI, IPFS desktop, all shipping their own IPFS nodes, uh, which just crunches to your battery life. And it makes sense to have one configuration that is best for the, this, your environment and have that. So hopefully we can get there, probably incrementally. I did a preliminary analysis of the configuration options that we have. I think some of those could be maybe hoisted out into specific API calls. Others, uh, uh, maybe not, but we need to figure out something. I think there's also one thing I noticed that is worth considering, that who is in charge is important. Is the embedder supposed to be deciding some of these configuration options, or is it a user decision? Uh, and treating them differently would be important, I think. Um, so if you care about this and want to help, please go to the issues that I linked to and that would be a way to help. Um, and 
Yeah, I think that's it probably. Oh yeah, and I'll also be talking to Textile Streetbox and other users about this configuration things so to make sure that uh, to understand how they use it and what is important and what is not. Because it, if it's a, if nobody really cares about it, then it would be easier change to make if people actually actively using it, then it will be a bigger problem. That's it for me. Thank you. That's super useful. Uh, I'm, I'm, I think you are aware, but uh, some time ago we disabled window IPFS experiment uh for multiple reasons one of them being a change of api and like we've been injecting the new version and or the old version and people have been expecting the new uh, the other one uh long story short is that uh i think we if we like reintroduce window ipfs uh in some form that would probably need to be aligned with uh this like no deduplication work that you do uh, the like node in companion, uh, like either embedded JS IPFS or the HTTP client, it's still like the single instance could be like next to IPFS desktop, uh, one of options, right? Um, so, uh, I think there's like an overlap of uh, some configuration options, uh, especially like for JS IPFS, which is embedded in brave. Uh, that's a well, like an an example of uh, we have like a custom configuration that's specific for that environment, uh, but that's just like there's probably like multiple namespaces within the config. Like we right now have a single config, and it's like everything there uh, from the data store, network, transports, and even like my own addresses, which I will announce myself. Uh, we may uh, want to get some like more gradual control that would be interesting uh especially like for uh embedded js ipfs in brave so i just wanted to mention that yeah so uh i just want to make sure that i understand right so is ipfs exposed in brave native one is expectations that uh users will still be able to configure and have different configuration based on those choices or am i misunderstanding yeah, so that's that's a very good question. Like right now, it's an experiment, and you basically have a input for the JSON configuration of your node, and it's not one one hundred percent under control of the user. Uh, like things like which TCP port is picked, it's automatically like we find the free one, so user does not need to like do anything. Uh, so it's like a hybrid mixture. Uh, but that's a, that, that's interesting. If we move forward, we'll probably like remove option to like overwrite everything and just give uh, toggles for a specific things that make sense. For example, how much disk space I want to allocate for this, and people may not care about transports. Good. Andrew, do you want to? Tell us about web UI analytics. Uh, yes, just briefly. So um, I'm kind of looking into where, why people might not be upgrading to the latest versions of uh, IPFS, be it Go IPFS as a library or as a daemon, JS IPFS mostly used as a library uh, and uh, desktop and to a lesser extent, web UI, but it kind of ends up being a little bit messy, but seems like the analytics is broken down by at least like what's the desktop version and what's the web UI version. Um, but it doesn't look like we currently store anything about the go slash JS IPS version. We don't record that in analytics, which I'm currently making a, the most horrendous matrix of what versions of web UI were shipped in what versions of Go IPFS and desktop so that I can then go like, because it looks like Go IPFS went from 2.4.4 of web UI to 2.7.2. .2. So you know that anything in between didn't ship with Go IPFS. So it's a desktop version, which then allows you to work out, oh, this version desktop shipped with this version of Go IPFS, maybe. Uh, gets a bit hairy. So that would be good to record that so we can work out like what are people 
actually running inside of these things rather than me have to jump through many hoops. And web UI is recorded as a hash of the, like the CID uh, in all the source code. It, no source code anywhere says the version of web UI that it's shipping, uh, which is very frustrating. You can't search uh, our source repositories. You have to look at commits for something that looks like the word web UI. Um, a comment next to those uh, CIDs would be super helpful to, for people to work out what version is going on there. Or even shipping web UI as a NPM dependency uh, doesn't sound crazy to me, but maybe there's some history there that I'm missing. Um, the other thing I noticed poking around in Countly is there's a lot of errors. Uh, and I don't know if anyone has noticed this and gone like, it's actually, it's not a problem. Um, and there's specifically, let me share my screen briefly. Uh, this one, I think Got a lot of windows open right now. Um, there's a bit here that the 28th of April was when um, 0.5 came out. And I guess we also released a version of uh, desktop. And it looks like there's some unique crashes that we've seen. I'm not quite sure what unique means, if it's a person or if it's... Um, it's a type of, it's, it's yes. the actual type of crash. So a new, a new name for a crash uh, or some kind of exception that we've not yeah. seen before. That's like, I like that we get new ones all the time now. Uh, whereas before, although like obviously down here, we are getting crashes. They were all the same crash, whereas now they're all unique crashes. Like, what's up with that? I suspect uh, there's like a path with uh, maybe user account name in the or error. The ID in the that path. will make it unique. And then we have these down here. Um, so possibly people are having a bad time, but we can't tell. Uh, it's interesting as well to look at. Um, uh, where was it? A different page. I was looking at uh, in events, um, the over 30 days, IPFS init failed five, half a million times. Whereas like move a file or write a file a thousand times, this number is gigantic compared to everything else, which makes me think there's something going on that like is probably not causing most people to have a bad time, but there's something happening, either weird logging stuff that we Yeah, we should check where, where we actually capture. Maybe a it's a, like a typo. Maybe it's like actually different action and just the label, because it's like, it does not make so much sense. I'm um, not completely trusting in the accuracy of these event labels. There's, there are a couple of other things that were sort of weird as well. Okay. That's, we that's probably good to should know. have audit of, uh, of labels because yeah. yeah if you go to the error uh, page it tells that the uh, error with most occurrences is one that's launched on startup all mechanism disabled which is non-fatal but i don't see that label about epfs in it anywhere here on the error page which is weird so maybe i shouldn't look too much into that um I'm mostly interested in seeing like, is there, um, what's the kind of like uptake on desktop for shipping uh, 0.5 and above, which I think I can work out, um, but also making it easier to do that in the future so that we have a good idea of like, is desktop driving any adoption or is it just a very small piece compared to other things? And then web UI is shipped in more things. People are obviously using web UI when not using desktop. Uh, but we don't get much information aside from the uh, version of web UI um, to be able to debug or find out more what's going on there. So uh, is, there, is it worth me opening an issue to uh, discuss this more on, I'm not even sure where. Uh, I think it's repo or in web UI? Yeah, I, I, I think it makes sense to open an issue in web UI repo. Because my understanding is like actually the most of metrics that we gather are from web UI. The desktop just had a, a few additional labels, but 
still uh, the most of uh, metrics are gathered in web ui and like web ui itself could like detect the node type which it, it is connected to and direct report that uh, so that's will be pretty useful to find the gaps that we like our like blind spots right now uh, i know that in the uh, ipfs desktop uh, uh, when you run web ui inside of electron i changed the user agent uh, to the version of a desktop not sure if it's useful uh, but it, at least it's no longer like an electron version uh, yeah I, I can see that in the um, in one of the dashboards the uh, the kind of the other thing that I was looking at oh uh, I've lost my own I've lost my page I was on um, I was trying to kind of work out where so we have webui.ipfs.io, uh, which is like, it's there. You can go to it and arbitrarily run that and it will fail. Are we, do we have analytics on that hosted version of the webui? If, some, if someone opted in, you should see stats. Um, that's all the UI I use, by the way. So maybe that's a source yeah, of so, yeah. some of the errors because if you just open that without IPFS running. So that's what yeah. I was thinking. If uh, desktop is not running, it fails to connect to the host, and I think that might be, I, I don't yeah. know if it is. But it also like, means we probably need a better label. <laughs> okay, um, well, that answers all my questions, <laughs> at least for now. And Andrew, if you're gonna open, if you're gonna open a sort of amend countly collecting stuff ticket. I would, I would vote that as far as I can tell, we do not have an ad via desktop event in web UI, which I'd like to, I'd like to start tracking. And then I don't see any events for pinning. And that would also, it, that's going to get more and more important as we start thinking about integrating the pinning API. So it'd be super cool if we could add some events for, for pinning um, activities, both in when desktop you say and web UI. Via desktop, do you mean like dragging from yeah. someone's desktop or like yep. add via IPFS desktop? The no, 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 no. Add via, add via your, your OS desktop. Ah, yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. Because we have that. It's interesting to see that, you know, is this like a subset of general like files, right? Um, and we have that for, we have those events captured in IPFS desktop, but we don't have add via OS desktop as far as I could find it um, as a discrete event in web UI. Uh, something uh, probably kind, kind of related is the fact that uh, right now when we ship uh, web UI with IPFS, uh, Go IPFS or JS IPFS, we like hard coded that version that Andrew mentioned that is annoying to track. Uh, and that means uh, those uh, sort of like every Go IPFS and JS IPFS release ships with hard-coded web UI, which cannot be effectively upgraded unless you upgrade Go IPFS or JS IPFS itself. If you run IPFS desktop, it bundles web UI inside. Uh, if you run IPFS companion, historically we were embedding uh, the CID and we were ahead of everyone else but to reduce like maintenance and uh, different versions, we now use the version that's hard coded in Go IPFS or, or, or JS IPFS. Uh, that is uh, me prefacing a question, like the, the question or idea that um, historically, I think there's an open issue to allow uh, opening um, web UI from the API port uh, not just but that hard-coded CID, but also the DNS link name, which is at webui.ipfs.io. And that got sort of like a pause. Uh, Steven uh, was not comfortable with uh, going ahead with that because it relies on the assumption that the DNS link from the, the DNS points at the real web UI, not like someone could man in the middle at the DNS level and inject a different version of web UI. That's why we don't have this like rolling release. Because right now when we, uh, I believe if we merge to master, 
uh, dev web UI IPFS IO is updated and if you will merge to re release or something like that uh, the web UI is updated or the other way around um, so we could like we could have a rolling release of web UI uh, the problem is uh, we don't want to do that as a default because we want to ship a uh, like the version that's tested with against a specific Go IPFS version. Uh, but I want to figure out a way to provide a, an easier way for people to opt into the latest web UI. And I think like in Companion, at least we could, uh, historically we've, we've been uh, playing with uh, uh, modifying the origin header to pretend that we, loaded web UI from the API port and that removed the manual step of setting course headers on go IPFS daemon to allow loading web UI um, uh, to allow accessing API from a, a gateway port um, I'm just like interested if we because we also are planning to like not planning but we are discussing uh, to stop uh, bundling web ui inside of electron browser and instead uh, ipfs desktop just having like a menu item for status and files and that link would open in a browser which the which the surveys seem to support at this point sorry to interrupt you but so far that looks yeah. like the yeah, way yeah, forward. yeah so it's like actually i i, I hope to have a sh like uh, shorter description, but it's actually like a lot of moving pieces right here and uh, Long story short is that we we probably will have to figure it out a way of uh, Making it easier for people to opt into the latest web UI uh, a Real cycle of go IPFS is like six weeks uh, Unless we are like comfortable with aligning with that real cycle um, maybe that's a good way uh, moving forward, but uh, uh, to me, it's like an open question. Uh, either we align ourselves with uh, risk cycles of uh, Go IPFS, and maybe JS IPFS will follow, or we may need to find a way, be that with companion or not, uh, of uh, letting users uh, to opt in to the latest version. I, I don't think it's possible without companion, actually. So I. I yeah, that's a hard cookie. Can, can sure. I ask, yeah. ask a question? So I think one problem that you mentioned were course headers, and that's something that came up before as well. It seems that maybe solving the course header might unlock many opportunities here. Uh, specifically, like, is there a reason why Web UI can't be just a web app that uses IPFS internally? So that way, then you could go load to the actually could load with a hash of the web UI release, or it could go to the web UI.ipfs.com and it will automatically make point to the latest hash, but that could like uh, no, make actually, it a lot more flexible. It's actually like it is a web app and you can do that. You can load web that hash from the gateway, from a public gateway or local gateway. The problem is uh, that if you load it from the gateway port, uh, it will have a different origin than your API port. Right. And then you need to like, add those course headers. And th this is like just a problem of user experience. It's not like we would like, if someone opens, uh, click a link in web UI, uh, in IPFS desktop, we don't want to ask people, we don't want to greet people with that error. You need to type this stuff in console to make yeah, it work. So yeah. That was my point. Can we fix it? I think we should fix it. Yeah, totally. <laughs> like, uh, if you're on desktop, we could show the prompt from and you can click the prompt and like get the core setter set up. Yeah, we, we, if you don't we, use desktops, then maybe something we can figure out for the daemon version as well. Um, yeah, th exactly. That's that's what I would love to figure out uh, how to get, like remove that manual step. Uh, at least for desktop, I think it's possible if we pass uh, the address. Uh, the, the potential small problem is that in Go IPFS, if you update configuration, it's not like a live reload. Not everything is live reloaded. You need to stop and start node. And that's like pretty big, requires some refactoring in Go IPFS. Um, Can some holes made be there? Because it seems like the core setters may not necessarily need to be 
loading in memory. It's like you need to know it at the request time, especially option request. Uh, anyway, if there is an issue, I think that would be interesting to look into. Uh, so that's also something I want to have regardless. Yeah, I, I think that there's an issue, uh, at least for the uh, stuff with cores and the DNS link security and opting into the latest version. I'll find it and add it to the notes after the call, I think. Um, we got three minutes left. <laughs> so I <I've, laughs> I propose we, uh, we get those three minutes uh, back, uh, unless there are like super important topics you want to bring two minutes before the end of the call. I don't think so, right? <laughs> All right, so thank you so much for joining uh, this week. See you probably sooner, but on this call in two weeks. Bye. Yeah. We just want to stay on this call. Go get your coffee or whatever and come back in a sec. Get the coffee. Yeah. Oh, cool. I can stay in the room. I have coffee. I've consumed all the coffee. I am 